the phenomenon of Karen, the phenomenon of a Karen is a real thing. You have seen the memes. You have seen the videos. You know the haircut. But now a Christmas Karen is here. It's available uh, on video on demand. It is here to, well, I don't want to say brighten your holiday, but definitely scold your holiday and ask for the manager. Uh, a Christmas Karen is exactly what you would think. It's a Christmas Carol with a woman named Karen who acts like a Karen. Uh, she's a bitch. She's mean to kids. She's mean to neighbors. And we actually showed the trailer uh, recently at LA Comic-Con as part of our panel, Future Indies You Must See. And everyone who watched the trailer, it got uproarious applause. People thought, uh, the movie looked hysterical from the trailer. I have seen the film. It's delightful. It's one of those movies like that I would put in a category because I love the poster for this movie. I actually put the poster for the film on our Film Threat Instagram, um, which is just Film Threat. And uh, I love it. It's like I, I look at I look at that. And I'm like, I can't believe this movie got made. It exists. I love it. This is great. I love that when indie filmmakers just are passionate and say, oh, my God. No one's done a movie called A Christmas, Karen. We're just going to make it. And we have the filmmakers. The co-directors are joining us. Please welcome John Minkowski and Lisa Eno-Smith are here to join us. Hi, everybody. Uh, hey, thank you for joining us on the Film Threat Livecast. It's a pleasure to have you on. Let me see if I can do a little reset here we're going to put you front and center whoa, whoa. Oh, that's, scary. Hey, that's too close oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> that's okay but uh uh i want to talk to you about the film i i think it's really fun yes it's a cheesy christmas movie you see from the trailer the movie has a sense of humor about itself it doesn't take itself too seriously it's the same story of a christmas carol but with a karen which is actually perfect karen's kind of a modern day scrooge anyways right yes and the first female Scrooge, so we were happy it could be a woman. It's the first female Scrooge. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta no, you gotta tout. Hey, you gotta you gotta tout everything about it. But um, I, I I I'm sure I could guess what inspired it. But what led to you saying, you know what? Because you can come up with a cheesy idea for a movie, but I know from firsthand experience what it's like you, to make the film. You gotta like you gotta write that screenplay. You gotta get the cast. You gotta raise the money. What led to you seeing that was, so suddenly we're hey we're we're making this movie now? <laughs> what, what got you in the director's chair? What was the journey from concept in your head to uh, take one on the set? Well, we were in the middle of COVID, and we had this brilliant idea, another high concept film called Florida Man, and we were you know we're shooting in Florida. We get Florida Man again. It would be based on a lot of the actual Florida Man stories, and with COVID, it was such a large cast we started lo losing all of our permits. So we started thinking about what can we do this a little smaller? What can we do this a little better? Faster? But we still wanted to be kind of high concept, you know, something where you listen to the title and you see the poster and you go, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the problem with Florida man is when, when we got out of it, we went to check with our representative from Florida and mm -hmm. she said, I I'm sorry, there's like four or five Florida man projects going on now. And none of them are shooting in Florida, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so wait, so you're in Florida right now. We are yeah, in Florida. We are in Florida. We're Florida based. And uh, so um, write about what you know about. Uh, but <laughs> we thought, uh, we asked, we just said, well, what about a Christmas Karen? And I thought for sure there'd be like 15 of those out there. And there were not. So we actually have a ChristmasKaren.com and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so we hustled because we knew that this, this meme, you know, we, we admit we're playing off of a meme. Um, that it's going to be on a downward slide. It already is. It, it was super hot two years ago, and now it's okay. Everybody knows what it is. Um, but we wanted to take advantage of it while we could, mostly to do a fun comedy. And it's it's about you know it's it's about Scrooge um, and uh, both about uh, redemption. So we thought that would be cool. Cool. What? Um, how did you 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 shot in Florida then? So that's uh, uh, that's amazing opportunity of like talent and different resources there. I mean, you know, there are a lot of indie films being made uh, on the East Coast. Uh, what were some of the production challenges? And and I have to say, the lead actress for your film who plays Karen, she's 
perfect. Did she come with that haircut or did you have to like no I have her hair that way? Wig. She has beautiful long red hair and we put that awful wig on her every day. I felt so sorry for her. Also, <laughs> she's an amazing improviser comedian on her own. She's also the was on the Carvana commercial during the Super Bowl and she's hilarious. And she's the sweetest, kindest, uh anti Karen humble you know. person maybe. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so you you have seen her on those Carvana commercials. She was uh, doing... the oversharing mom. She was the only one that really. And she used to live in Orlando, but she moved to Los Angeles. Uh, and she was the only one that we did bring from Los Angeles to help her help us out. Other than our costume designer, uh, who also um, Ann Claus Farley, who who really helped create the characters, the the different ghosts and things like that. Um, so the the challenges. One was we didn't have a lot of money. We are self-funded, so basically, I, I that drive. That means we don't get <laughs> new cars. <laughs> I, drive, I drive a Kia Soul and make a movie, you know. Yeah. But um, we, uh, what we wanted to do was get a whole Christmas vibe. So we thought, well, if we shoot between the day after Thanksgiving and the day before Christmas, uh, we can get all the Christmas lights we want for free in town here in beautiful town of Celebration, and uh, try to do that. Now the challenge was. If we had a rain day, we would be so screwed. We only had 22 days and it was a lot of overnights, which is also problematic you, when you're switching over to just doing all nights, all nights, all nights. Yes. And um, uh, permitting is a challenge in different parts of Florida. Some places it's really easy. Where we were shooting, it takes like 10 signatures for a permit. So stuff like that. But we got past it uh, and we pulled it off and... Um, and actually post-production happened a little bit faster than I thought. Normally most people go, oh my God, post-production, but post actually went pretty quickly. So that was good. We've got uh, comments and questions in the chat. So let's actually get right to yeah, it let's here. Get to it. <laughs> let's get to the comments. Imperfect says, Karen, your holiday. Red Terror 1978 says, Christmas Karen 2, it was the man fault. Man. <laughs> uh, that's kind of a plot line we've been talking about because if something's going to pull Karen backwards, <laughs> it's going to be a man. Yeah, it's going to be a Florida man. A yeah, Florida for sure. Man. Uh, Davina Duckworth says humbug and goes on to say, uh, I would like to speak to your manager. <laughs> and then Red Terror 1978 goes on to say, shout out to Jennifer Lawrence for being the first female Scrooge. Ah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Alan <laughs> and Sarah and Sara says, this one sounds like it might be fun. And then a question here from Brock Samsonite. Is this story a bit truer to the Dickens original tale or is this an outright parody? Well, it, it actually follows the story. And in, in fact, we've been compared, which is really great. I mean, we're happy to be compared to Spirited, uh, Ryan Reynolds film. It was slightly, uh, the budget for our entire film was their budget for their craft services table. But right. um, in comparison, they they messed around a little bit more with the story. They, they really, you know, had more of, of an interesting, you know, plot twist and tale. We pretty much stick to it. She's not so good. She meets these three different ghosts. Where we spent our time having fun was, who are these ghosts? What is their personality and how do they interact with her? Because it is a kind of an improvisational um, communication between her and all the various ghosts. So that's how we went about it. So I, I'd say it's really kind of true to the Dickens story. Very true. Other than the fact that in the Dickens story, uh, you know, Marley's ghost does not wear a chastity belt for change, but we do. <laughs> we do. Well, I will say this. Um, I also have to compliment you on the running time in the movie. We live in a time where everything is over two hours. This is like, it's like a tight, it's a tight comedy under 90 minutes. Boom. You're entertained. You're in, you're out and, and uh, good time. More comments here for people. Sharing is Karen. So <laughs> yeah. Um and uh, let's see, Soul Bear says Christmas Karen sounds like a good concept. Thank you, Soul Bear. And then uh, Perfect Q says, Question for Christmas Karen Is there a movement in the movie to bring down the Santa patriarchy? Oh, that's a good question. For there's some old movies I, you know, we grew up watching where Santa was kind of a jerk. If you were right. called Rudolph and like, you girls stay here, we'll go off and do all the fun stuff. <laughs> Well, um, having seen the movie, that element is not a part of it at all. I think they're referring yeah, no. to that show on HBO, uh, HBO Max. There, that's actually like a plot mm -hmm. line, which is ridiculous. That's not a part of this film. It's a completely yeah. And some of the story. some of the older films, like the old little cartoon Re Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, yeah. Santa's a jerk. Yeah. Um, you know, so we we thought it would be really interesting to have a lot of females uh, in this in this film and also not everyone's a bombshell beauty babe um you know we wanted to have you know a real kind of 
feel for, for this thing. Of course, it's comedy. So uh, it's real to a point. <laughs> <laughs> and then Obama Nation says, must have been fun making a Karen lecture about the surplus population. Oh. <laughs> what the heck? Well, we do use, uh, we, we say decrease the surplus population in ours, but uh, we do refer to it. So. Oh, that's so funny. Um, and Brock Samsonite has a question here. Um, this will, we'll wrap it up with this. Our last question here from Brock Samson. How long did it take you to fundraise this movie and how did you accomplish that? That's a very good question. Uh, we are real jobs. We have been working together for over 25 years as theme park producers. So we produce stunt shows and uh, big shows for the different parks. And so it takes us about a year to take all the profits, hide them away, and uh, build up enough so we have a, we stopped asking friends. For money. We did, we stopped asking. <laughs> After your first movie, you ask friends for money and then you lose all then their money. And they say, uh, my daughter we could be the star. It's like, no, <laughs> no. no. So we decided to self-fund after the first movie. Um, and, wow. and, and in so doing, we have to scrape up the money to be able to get what we, what we need. Luckily, we are uh, lucky to be, um, have business uh, in theme parks. So if you've ever seen Waterworld at Universal in uh, California or the Bourne Stuntacular in Universal here or Disney in Shanghai, we did a Pirates of the Caribbean. We, we do work with a lot of producers of major motion pictures doing recreations and stunt shows mostly for their IP. And it's nice for us to every once in a while create our own IP. So we're like, uh, you know, Why is some, it like this? Because yeah. we want it that way. Yes, right. <laughs> well, that? Tell me, like, qu qu just a quick question about that. That seems like a fascinating business because I love those stunt shows. I mean, they're kind of cheesy or whatever. Like, there's one at Universal where they just kind of show you how stunts are done, and you see like people do, do these spectacular stunts. Like, you're hiring people. There's a script for the show. Like, what's involved in putting that together? Yeah. Well, they, and, and the thing is, is that. We very well versed in stunt shows and action and things like that. And people have asked us, this is your sixth film. Why haven't you done a stunt, you know, a, a show with lots of stunts, a movie with lots of stunts and things like that. It's like, we can do it. We it's can do it. We can, but it's, <laughs> it's expensive. expensive. Uh, so that's why we don't do it yet. But uh, we certainly have the contacts and the wherewithal to be able to do it once we scrape up a little bit more money. Maybe our next movie will have some stunts and a, and a few more special effects in it, we hope. I have to ask you a question. You you mentioned you live in Celebration, and I remember when that place first opened. You know, Disney was basically your HOA. What, what's it like living in Celebration now? Well, it, it's it never has been a gated community, and that's what disappointed a lot of people when they first moved into Celebration. They were like, they were thinking they were going to come to Utopia, and you know, animatronics would welcome you, and Mickey would be. You know, I was scared personally. I thought uh, <laughs> they were watching me, and then I would be like, all of a sudden, this a loudspeaker in my house would go. Ah, uh, 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 kids, not on the couch. You know, things like that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but so really, it's just a, it's a regular community. And, and since that time, there's been other ones that have been built that are similar. They basically went to Savannah, Georgia, and Charleston, and and you know it reinvented porches and and alleys. That's a concept. So they, uh, they there's now more community. So it's just a your normal average community that uh, uh, happens to be very close to Disney World. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you, uh, John and Lisa, for joining us on the Film Threat live cast. A Christmas Karen is currently available on demand. Check it out. Uh, happy holidays to both of you. And thank you for joining us on the Film Threat live cast. Thank uh, you very much. We're going to be you. sure and uh, get your, uh, your your mailing address so that we can send you some Christmas Karen swag. ornaments. Swag. Yeah. Swag. <laughs> So that, yeah, so you can adorn oh. your tree. And maybe give it to some of the some of your 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 fans that. that oh, you they know. would love it. Yeah. Oh, they love it. We do a thing where if you send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to film uh, to film thread five zero four two Wilshire Boulevard, PMB one five zero zero Los Angeles California nine zero zero three six. I I will send you a film thread bumper sticker, and if the envelope's big enough. I'll throw in a DVD and some other stuff, but yeah. Or oh, more question here: Where can we see a Christmas Karen? Yeah. Oh yes, you can see it just about everywhere right now. A good place for people to see it is Pluto TV. It's free. There are commercials, but Pluto TV has it, and they've done a great job of advertising it. Um, uh, but then it's also on iTunes, Amazon, YouTube. Google Play, YouTube, uh, all of the all of the different uh, uh, pay per views, you know. And then uh, pretty soon here it'll be coming out on all of the 
the free with commercials. So um, I say, you know, get on your TV and punch in A Christmas Carol, and I'm sure it'll pop up. It's the perfect movie to watch while you wrap presents, which actually is what I was doing when I watched the movie. <laughs> it is. I seriously it's was exactly wrapping what my, That's what my wife said. She's not my wife. That's exactly <laughs> what my wife said. And um, uh, she said, it's great to wrap presents with friends while drinking heavily. So. Awesome. Uh, John and Lisa, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Congrats on the movie. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thanks. Thank See you. ya.